Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. I will instruct you, I will teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he will not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him. And then here's God's promise. He says he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth this fruit in its season. God's promise to prosper us. He's also promised to guide us, to give us wisdom, to give us the understanding that we need to succeed. Greetings. Thank you for tuning in to Living Strong today. It's always our joy and delight to come your way and spend this time with you in God's presence. Uh, in his word and also to pray with you at the end of the program we will take some time just to pray with you and uh, we want you to just prepare your heart so that we could pray together 
uh, believe God to speak to us, believe God to touch our lives and uh, make a difference uh, in our lives. Before we get started, just want to mention that we have uh, two new publications that are available. Uh, one that is called Gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, the other one called The Father's Love. Uh, these are available for free. Uh, you can go to our church website and our publications page and download this. Uh, these, as well as several other publications, all available for free. Tell your friends about it so that uh, many people can benefit uh, from these publications and other resources that are available through our church website. So remember, make use of these resources so that you can be strengthened, get other people to also use these resources. Today, we're going to begin uh, a short series, uh, and yet a very important series called Receiving God's Guidance. You know, all of us as God's people, we want to live a life that honors God and glorifies God. And one important part of that life is how is to follow God's will, follow God's plan, God's purpose, uh, God's, and, and follow that through each and every situation or decision that we have to make, which means that we have to receive God's guidance. So this is a very important part of our life and our journey of faith. How do we receive God's guidance? How do we know what God wants us to do? Uh, some decisions may be small, uh, simple, uh, may, not have, uh, uh, may not be very, very significant in our lives. And yet then there are other decisions that are very big, huge, uh, which could have an impact on maybe the rest of our lives and uh, so on. And so how do we receive God's guidance uh, in these matters, whether they are small or whether they are big. Uh, and uh, even if you know, uh, you have an idea of uh, what God wants you to do in life, uh, what you desire or aspire to become uh, so that you can glorify God, uh, how do you get there? How do you follow God's uh, uh, step by step and journey into that plan and purpose that you feel God has for you? So receiving God's guidance is a very important thing. And what we want to do over the next several weeks is talk about how we can receive God's guidance. In, the, in, the, in this uh, first program in this series, uh, we just want to establish uh, a few thoughts here uh, on the fact that God himself has said that he will lead us and teach us. So God has offered help, if you want to put it that way, that he said, look, I will be there to guide you and teach you. Uh, and then we also want to talk a little bit about our side of the responsibility, our side of uh, how to receive God's guidance as we just lay a foundation for what we will be talking about in the weeks to come. There are several scriptures in, in the Bible where God promises to guide us and lead us. And we will just reference a few. Uh, Psalm 32, verses 8 and 9, God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they would not come near you. So what God is saying is this. He's, he's saying, look, I will lead you. I will teach you in the way that you should go. And I will guide you with my watchful eye. But I just want, to, I want you, don't be like the horse or don't be like the donkey. The horse, is full of energy, full of strength, and just tends to run ahead of, uh, run ahead, go its own way because it's powerful. It's got, you know, what it takes to move fast. The mule, on the other hand, is uh, stubborn. It's unwilling to move. It just wants to stay where it is. So God says, don't be like either of these, uh, uh, what these, either of these animals represent. But God has promised. He says, I will lead you. I will instruct you. I will teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. And that's a wonderful promise. That we can go back to God and say, God, this is what you promised, and I want that. I ask that you will do that for me personally. In Psalm 25, verse 12, the Bible says, Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. So for the person who reverences God or fears God, the Bible says God will teach you in the way that you have to choose, in the choices you have to make, in the path that you have to go. Uh, he will guide you, in other words. Now we know Psalm 23, verse 3, David uh, is uh, 
looking at God as the great shepherd. And, and, and part of God shepherding our lives is that he also guides us. And so he says in verse 3, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads us in the right paths uh, for his own name's sake, for the honor of his own name. He was will, he's willing to lead us in those paths. And Proverbs 3 verse 32, it says, his secret counsel is with the upright. Just think of it, God's secret counsel, his private instruction is with the upright. But those who live right before God, he says, look, my secret counsel is for you. I will secretly counsel you, tell you the secrets of my heart, tell you the right way to go, and so on. Now, while God has promised uh, to guide us and uh, lead us and teach us in the affairs and matters of life, what is our responsibility? I want to mention these three things when it comes to our responsibility of receiving God's guidance. First of all, there is the responsibility to seek, so seeking. Secondly, listening. And third, obeying. So you and I have to seek, we have to listen, we have to obey. And let's just elaborate on these three uh, uh, responsibilities from our part uh, in receiving God's guidance. First of all, seek. We must be in a posture where we are inquiring of God. You know, if you're not seeking, then you're not going to find. Jesus put it very simply in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. He says, and these are very familiar scriptures. He says, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And he says, everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. In other words, look, this is available for everyone. But you've got to seek in order, in order to find. So if you want to discover God's will, you want to understand God's guidance, the first thing for us to do is to seek for it, is to search for it. And God always responds to us when we do that. That means when you go before God and say, God, I really want to know what is the right thing for me to do. I really want to know, God, what are you saying to me? in this situation. God, what is your guidance? How do you want to guide me uh, in this decision I have to make or in this um, choice that I have to make or in the path that I have to choose? If you and I are in that posture of seeking God, of inquiring of God, of asking Him and letting Him know that we really want to receive His guidance, you know, God will always guide us. He's promised to do it, but we must first seek Him. In Jeremiah 29, verses 12 and 13, God says to his people, Then you will call upon me, go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now, God is not, you know, trying to play hide and seek. He says, look, I'm hiding. Try and find me where I am. That's not the point. It's not like God is hiding. Where can God hide? God is so big. He's so powerful. Uh, but the point here that he's getting across to us is, if you come after me, then you will get to know me. But if you're not interested, you know, God's not going to force himself into our lives and forces uh, um, his will or guidance upon us. We must go after that. And then he promises to make himself available. But he wants us to do it with all our heart. That means say, God, I really want to do your will. I really want to know the way you want me to go. So we must do it with all our heart. And uh, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, he says, Call to me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things that you do not, that you know, do not know. That is, you call to me, I will show you. But uh, we must do the first seeking. We must do the first calling. And he's promised to answer us. Now, we, there are many ways in which we can seek God. We can seek His guidance uh, during the normal course of things. Uh, that means as you're going about your daily life and, you know, various decisions, inside you just pray, a simple prayer. God, what should I do now? God, what's the right thing here? God, what choice should I make here? You know, that's your seeking His guidance in the normal things of life. You know, you're just going about your daily work and you just say, God, what do I do here? God, I have to make a decision. Or God, I have to say something. God, I have to handle the situation. God, give me guidance. That is you seeking his guidance, his counsel, just in every day in the normal course of life.
but we can also seek his guidance during special times of seeking. And this especially has to do with big important decisions that you need to make where you may set aside a day or you may set aside an extended period of time. Some people may take a few days off and uh, just go in a quiet place and say, God, I have this huge decision to make. I need to know your will. And so it is a special time of seeking where you're just uh, shutting everything else off and you're seeking God in order to receive guidance from him on a certain matter. And of course, guidance, God also gives us guidance during unexpected God moments. That means you're not really, uh, you know, intentionally seeking God, but God sets it up for you. Somebody comes and gives you a prophetic word, or you wake up in the morning and realize you've had a dream where God has been instructing you. So these are God moments, or a sudden door of opportunity opens up for you, and you're like, and you say, God, I was really wasn't praying about this or asking you for an opportunity, but here there is an opportunity, God, uh, is this you? Or somebody comes uh, to you and, you know, a, a divine contact comes into your life and, and you're saying, God, what is this all about? So that's another thing that can happen as, as, we, as God gives his guidance to us. The second part is about listening. The listening part is me being attentive, we being attentive to God. You know, in John chapter 10, the Lord Jesus, again, using the uh, analogy of the shepherd and the sheep, he said this in John 10, I'll read verses 1 to 5 and, and verse 27. He says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. And then in verse 27 he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So repeatedly in, in this whole uh, text here about Jesus being the shepherd, and we his people being the sheep, one of the things that Jesus keeps repeating is, they know my voice, they hear my voice. So that hearing is a posture of listening. Your, 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 your ears are in tune, your ears are attentive, your ears recognize uh, the shepherd's voice, and you're listening for his voice, and you're following him as he leads. So that listening is an important posture for uh, you and me, you know, if we are really going to receive God's guidance in our lives. And so in the weeks to come, we're going to talk about how do we listen? How do we recognize God when he's speaking to us? So God is speaking. The important thing is, are we listening? And are we listening in the right places and to the right voice? Because Jesus said, they will not listen to the voice of a stranger. And unfortunately, sometimes us uh, Christians, as believers, you know, we are so desirous to hear from God but the thing is, we end up listening to the wrong voices, or we end up going to the wrong places trying to listen to God's voice. But Jesus makes it very really clear here that his sheep hear his voice, and they'll follow him, and they will not follow a stranger. The last part of our responsibility is to obey God. You know, if God knows that we are going to obey him, he's going to speak to us. But if he sees that we are stubborn, we're already set in our ways, we've already got our ma mind made up, uh, there is no reason why God should speak. Of course, he may do it in order to keep us from our wrongdoing. But if we are so stubborn, then there's no point in God speaking to us. But when God realizes, when God, when God sees that we are in a posture of obedience, we're ready to obey, then he's really going to speak to us. Uh, we must follow him and must obey him with faith, with patience, um, uh, as we uh, step out and obey his voice. Now, sometimes uh, obedience is not easy. Because the way God would lead us would be contrary to our own desires. It could be contrary to our flesh and our soulish desires. And, and, and so obedience may not be easy in certain uh, situations where we're asking for God's guidance. So, three important responsibilities for us. We must seek, we must listen, and we must obey. All People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore 
offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in the Word, as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders, and miracles. Admissions are now open for the academic year 2019 for the one-year certificate in theology and Christian ministry, two-year diploma in theology and Christian ministry, three-year bachelor's degree in theology and Christian ministry, short-term Bible courses for three months in Varanasi, UP, from September to December in English and Hindi. For application forms and brochure, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College or call us at 99854-548-99. All People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center is accredited by NATA. So thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Today's program was an introduction on the series that we're doing on receiving God's voice. Uh, we just talked about the fact that God is ready to guide us and lead us and teach us. Uh, but our responsibility, and we have a threefold responsibility. We must be seeking, we must be listening, we must be obeying. And I trust that uh, this will encourage you to uh, just say, God, I really want to hear from you. And stay with us in the weeks to come as we delve further into this subject and, of course, get others to watch with you so that we could grow in this area together. Uh, before we close the program today, we want to do two important things. First of all, for some of some, there could be people who are watching us who may, uh, not, may not have received Jesus into their lives. Maybe you're not born again. You're not sure that you're a child of God. You don't have, you're not sure that you have eternal life. You know, the Lord Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So the one requirement for us to enter God's kingdom is we need to be born again. And Jesus said, you know, in John 3 verse 7, He said, Do not marvel that I'm telling you, you must be born again. To be born again is to receive the life that God gives, the life from above. And it's as simple as receiving Jesus Christ into your life and saying, Lord, come into my life. So I'm going to lead us in a prayer to do that. And right now for that, I want to pray with you uh, for healing, for God's miracle power touching your life, and also for God's guidance to come into your life. For those of you who are just praying about matters where you need God's counsel and direction. So let's pray together and uh, before we close the program. So if there's somebody here who uh, would like to be born again, you want to receive Jesus into your heart, just pray this prayer with me and welcome Him into your heart. The Bible says, As many as received Him, to them He gives the power to become the children of God. So if you receive Him, you become His child. Just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. I believe you died for my sins on the cross. You were buried and you rose up again and you're alive today. I welcome you into my life. Give me life from above. Make me your child and help me follow you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's just pray together. For those of you watching, you need God's touch upon your life to heal, to deliver, to work a miracle. I'm gonna pray a simple prayer, but I believe God will move right where you are and meet your need. You lift up your need to God. Let's pray together. Father, I pray for those watching, those listening right now. By the authority of Jesus' name and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I break every yoke of sickness, disease, infirmity. In the name of Jesus, I command every evil work to be destroyed off of their bodies and minds. Every spirit of infirmity and affliction, I command it to leave. And God, let your healing word to flow into their bodies right now. Let them have receive complete release from whatever infirmity, whatever affliction, whatever disease, whatever disorder, abnormality, let it be completely broken off their lives in the name of Jesus. Release miracles, Father, into their lives. And I pray especially also for those who need your guidance, God, whether it's matters in their workplace, whether it's matters about their life and the purpose uh, about marriage, about family, about situations they're faced with. Lord, let your guidance come. 
Let them receive your direction for their lives. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications. The Father's Love, Baptism in the Holy Spirit, and Gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are available for free. These resources are ideal for personal study, for use in small groups, churches, and ministries. You can download them at apcwo.org slash publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org. We are in a crucial time in history where the urgency to fulfill God's mandate of reaching souls and making disciples has never been greater and more urgent. For this, we're getting ready to scale up and build APC World Outreach and Equipping Center. This will serve as an equipping center and a missions base using state-of-the-art technology to train, equip, release, and support ministers across our nation and across the globe. In phase one of this project, our goal is to acquire approximately five to six acres of land. That's the first step. In phase two, we are going to set up our Bible college and a media center. In phase three, we will be building our sanctuary where our church family can come together, be trained, equipped, nurtured, and cared for. To make this vision happen, we need your partnership. We know that this is going to take some amount of sacrifice, but remember, every investment you make today will reap great rewards for the Kingdom of God in the near future. You can go to our church website, apcwo.org slash build to impact page and get information on how to make your contribution or make your pledge of what you will be able to give in the months to come. We look forward to your support and prayer. We want to thank you in advance for what you will do to see this vision happen. Together, let's build to impact.